Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. The grievance industry takes on momentum. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Back in the late 1960s, the Vietnam War caused a huge division in America. Millions of young people decided their country was wrong for fighting the war in Southeast Asia. So they launched massive demonstrations all across the USA and built up a culture based on anti-authority. That is, the man who had power was bad. To go along with the political strife, the youth culture embraced sex, drugs, and rock and roll, changing the country from traditional attitudes to, if it feels good, do it. The protests of the 60s and early 70s brought about profound change, and many of the radicals back then have become the authority figures today, especially in the media. But now we have a new anti-authority movement, and it has been created by the grievance industry which President Obama and the Democratic Party have used very effectively to assume and maintain power. The grievance industry basically says that America is not a fair nation, that the deck is stacked against minorities, women, the poor, gays, atheists, Muslims, you name it. And the bad guys are white males, the Republican Party, and anybody who doesn't buy into the grievance industry. The politically correct national media has legitimized the grievance mongers instead of challenging them. Thus, race hustlers and ideological fanatics and other folks who do harm are given power on TV networks and in the political arena. And these folks are ruthless. If you go up against them, the pushback will be intense and the liberal media will be on their side. That awful situation is leading to chaos and confusion in this country. Here are two stark examples of what the anti-authority movement can do. On Saturday night, thousands of college kids descended upon Santa Barbara County, California for a big party. It didn't take long for violence to break out. Last night was pandemonium. <laughs> Santa Barbara students say Saturday's chaotic scene in Isla Vista was like a war zone. I had tear gas go right next to me. My nose started bleeding. An estimated 15,000 students had converged on the 6700 block of Del Playa Drive for the annual spring break party known as Deltopia. Phenomenal night, I think, but, you know, I don't think the city of Santa Barbara appreciated it too much. <laughs> Sheriff's officials say it started when officers tried to break up a fight. And smashed uh, the backpack into the face of the UC officer. Knocked him down, split his forehead open to the point where he needed extensive suturing. By 9.30 p.m., it was movie-like mayhem. Some tore stop signs out of the ground and paraded around with them. Others lit small fires, damaged property, and performed bizarre acts. Did it catch a dog to helium balloons? Yes, I was attempting to make him fly away. Local police agencies swarmed the area, threw tear gas, and shot rubber bullets. 10 or 15 people out on the balcony and they just doom, 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 doom. Mobs of people threw different objects, including bricks, at a police line, hitting one of them in the face. At least six of their own were injured, but Sheriff Brown says it could have been much worse had officers not acted quickly. Could have been potentially loss of life, many more injuries, and, and much more property damage. Now, we have seen spring break craziness before, and Talking Points is not saying there is a political component to that disgraceful display. It was simply a bunch of kids getting drunk and deciding to cause trouble. However, it is much easier to decide to cause trouble when you do not respect people and property. You are more likely to destroy property if you don't care about who's affected. And if you don't respect the authority of the police, you are more likely to attack them. Example number two. Dartmouth College in New Hampshire has a radical group of students who believe that Dartmouth is a place that harms minorities. But rather than transfer to a more enlightened school, some of these students decided to occupy the college president's office, shades of 1968. The school's president, Phil Hanlon, handled the situation badly. Incredibly, he allowed the defiant students to stay in his office for two full days. And when they finally left, he told them, hey, don't worry about it. Nothing much is going to happen to you except a few hearings. Now, if I had been the president of Dartmouth, I would have given the students 30 minutes to vacate my office, or they'd be expelled and charged with trespass by the cops. That's what Hanlon should have done, because the students are fringe people. Their grievances are largely absurd. Let's quote from their press release. The burden should not lie with systematically oppressed students affected by racism, classism, imperialism, nativism, sexism, heterosexism, cis-sexism, and ableism to ensure our own well-being. 
safety and continued existence at Dartmouth College, yet our lived experience at Dartmouth have been so violent that we were driven to write a plan for such an assurance, the Freedom Budget, unquote. For the record, cis sexism has something to do with transgendered rights, and ableism is discrimination against people with disabilities. Now, if I didn't know better, I would think that press release was written by the Harvard Lampoon. But it's serious. Those loons believe Dartmouth is a gulag, a place of oppression and bigotry for which you pay more than $65,000 a year to attend. Of course, those nutty students are part of the grievance industry. Everything the establishment does offends them. And now they have been empowered by President Hanlon. Are we all getting this? Again, the grievance industry is being driven by elements of the Democratic Party very successfully, as many Americans are now buying into the fact, the allegation, that the USA is unfair, insensitive, and downright bad. So expect to see more of this kind of madness in the future. If you're not a rich white guy, chances are you are the victim of discrimination. Therefore, we must have gender equality, race equality, sex equality, income equality, everything equality, or it's just not fair, not fair. The unintended consequences of a political deception like the inequality deal is a symbolic Frankenstein's monster, the creation of a disaster. And you know what the worst part is? There is inequality in America because inequality exists in every country. And in order to deal with that, intelligent discussion and smart policy changes should take place. But crazy people and hustlers are now controlling the debate. And because of that, constructive, effective problem solving will be hard to come by. The grievance industry is unleashed. And that's a memo. Next on the run.